Hello, everybody. You remember back during the summertime when I did those team-by-team -team previews, and at the end of all the previews, I gave a win prediction? Well, sometimes it's easy to forget what you predicted, but on this very web page, it doesn't forget at all. Yep, it's documented, so it's right there for the whole world to see. Well, today, it's time, now that the regular season is over, for my team-by-team -team year in review. This is how we're going to grade yours truly. If I got the prediction on the money, hey, perfect. Can't do any better than that. Obviously a positive. But also a positive, too, if I was within just one game of your actual total, higher or lower. But after that, it's going to get negative. For example, if I was two games off of the actual win total, higher or lower, then I was a bit off. I was way off if higher or lower, I was three games off of what they finished. And if higher or lower, it was four games or more of the actual total, boy, was I stupid. And there are going to be some of those on there, so watch out. Now, let's begin with the Big 12. Keep in mind that I gave a preview to all 10 of the Big 12 squads, and I was perfect on one of them. That's West Virginia. I picked seven wins, and that's what they finished with. I had four, or I didn't do too badly. And keep in mind that if Texas had beaten Texas Tech, I would have been on the money on both the Longhorns and Red Raiders in terms of number of predicted wins, but it didn't fall that way. I picked that Texas would have seven. They fall a win shy of my pick at six. I picked Texas Tech to miss a bowl game and win only five. Well, not only did Tech make a liar out of me and win six, but Cliff Kingsbury would be back next year. I didn't think that was going to be the case. My Oklahoma Sooners, hey, they did better than I thought this year. I thought they would still be good at 10 wins, but, hey, Lincoln Riley overachieved in year one, 11 wins. Hopefully they can make it 12 against TCU in the Big 12 title game on December 2nd. And Oklahoma State picked 10 wins. A little bit of disappointment for the Pokes, finishing with nine victories. All three losses, by the way, at home, and Mike Gundy still gets a raise. Man, I'm trying to figure that one out. I was a bit off, though, on TCU. I picked eight wins, and Gary Patterson did a hell of a job this year. Of course, they're playing my Sooners on December 2nd for the Big 12 title at Jerry World. TCU with 10 wins. K-State, I picked nine wins. A little bit of a letdown as they finish with seven. And I picked Kansas to win three games, and I must have been on something because the Jayhawks only won one game. Why am I not shocked? I was way off, though, on Iowa State. Matt Campbell deserves Coach of the Year. After all, this team won seven games in 2017. I picked that they were only going to win four. And boy, was I stupid on Baylor. But at least I didn't do what Joey Galloway did and picked Baylor to win the Big 12. Still, I thought Baylor would win six games. I thought they had to have enough offensive firepower. Well, not the case. They only won one game in 2017. Of course, that was against KU. Move on to the ACC. I was perfect with Virginia Tech. Nine wins is what I predicted. That's what they finished. The only thing I messed up with Virginia Tech, calling them Tech. Never do that. Virginia Tech country will rip you for it. Miami, nice year for the Hurricanes. Ten wins is what I predicted. That's what they finished. Of course, remember, Miami did not play Arkansas State. That game got postponed because of the hurricane. So I was helped a little bit by that. Miami, 10-1 regular season. Not bad. Louisville, I picked nine wins. They ended up with eight. A little bit of a disappointment. For Petrino squad, Clemson, the defending national champions, overachieved. I thought 10 wins. I thought they would suffer from losing too many players. But Dabble Sweeney's squad is right there. In fact, they're number one in the country. Even as we speak, they have 11 regular season wins. But boy, was I stupid. And this was my biggest one that I messed up on. Florida State, the Seminoles, 11 wins. I thought they would be in the playoff. Well, it turned out to be an injury field. Losing field season, only five victories. Yes, just an 11-game season because one got canceled. But still, it was a bad season regardless for Jimbo's Fisher squad. Only five wins. I was six off the pace. Now we're going to go to the Big Ten. I was perfect on Penn State. I said 10 wins for the defending Big Ten champions. And I did not think they would win the Big Ten. They didn't. As a matter of fact, 10-2 and two was their final record. Not bad on Michigan. I said nine. They finished with eight. But I was a bit off, though, on Ohio State. I thought they'd have a perfect regular season. They didn't. They ended up with 10 wins, not 12. Wisconsin was just the opposite. I thought they'd end up with 10 wins. In fact, they ended up with 12, the only FBS team to finish the regular season undefeated.
But, boy, was I stupid on Nebraska. It was a bad year for Big Red. I predicted a total of eight wins, and I must have been on something because the Huskers ended up with a mere four victories. But let's move on to better news. The Pac-12, and I did very well in this conference. In fact, USC, the Trojans, the men of Troy, I picked 10 wins. 10 wins is what they got. And not bad on the next six teams, Colorado, Washington, State, and Stanford, all within one victory of what I predicted. So I did not have any bad uh, picks in that conference. Now the SEC, let's see. Perfect on three teams. I said A&M would win seven, seven wins. Bama, I said, would lose one game and win 11. Perfect there. And LSU, I predicted, and they finished with nine victories. Not bad on Auburn and Georgia. The two teams will play in the SEC title game. I said Georgia would win um, a total of 10. They finished with 11 victories. And Auburn, nine wins. They actually ended up with 10. I was off, though, on Ole Miss. I thought losing Hugh Freeze and all these sanctions perhaps coming up would be too much for Ole Miss to handle. Well, I predicted four wins, and the Rebels made a liar out of me. They ended up with six, but boy, was I stupid on Florida. I picked eight victories in all kinds of trouble in Swampland, only four victories for the Gators. And there were four teams I made predictions for that are not a part of an FBS conference. For example, Notre Dame and Independent, I said eight wins. They ended up with nine South Florida, the Bulls, I said, would only lose one game. They'd have 11 wins. They end up with 10, so not bad on those two teams. And not bad on UConn, a uh, show that I did by request. The Huskies, I picked four wins. They only had three. And I was a bit off on UNC Charlotte, the 49ers. I knew it would struggle, but I thought they would at least get more than one win. I picked three wins. In fact, they only finished with a single victory. So, overall, how did I do? Well, not too shabby. Perfect on eight teams out of 38, not bad on 18 of the 38, nearly half, and only 12 out of 38 where I didn't fare too well. That includes four under the boy was I stupid category. And finally, if you break it down conference by conference, you can tell that the Pac-12 was very kind to me, and while the ACC and the Big Ten, well, not so much. Well, that's a look at my team-by-team -team year in review as far as regular season win predictions and actuals. See you next time.